finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Dishonor him, the one that has given them life, the one that has given them breath, the one that has given them their clothing, their families, all that is good. God has given you these things, and if you've won't let his name roll off your lips, like a death word, you blaspheme the God who created you. <laughs> and please don't try to hide behind the idea that you don't believe in God, because everyone knows for absolute certain that God exists. But they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. God bless you, sir. Yeah, I know you believe in him, sir. Everybody does. And we're going to stand before him one day and give an account. Sin must be punished. It must be. If God did not punish sin, God would not be good. But we all know that He is. So here's the dilemma, folks. We've all sinned. We've all broken those commandments. We've done wrong. And by doing so, we violated His standard. We sinned against God. Another reason that lying and stealing are so serious is because it is a front to God's nature. You see, the Bible says God cannot lie. The Bible says that God is utterly faithful and good and righteous. When we lie, we say God is a liar. When we commit adultery, when we sin by committing adultery or lusting, we say God is unfaithful. And he's offended by that, and rightly so. Thank you. Thank you. See, folks, I just got given a copy that says peace on it. God can give you, you can have peace with God. If you heed the gospel message, here is the gospel message. God offers you peace, terms of peace with Him. Right now, in your sinful condition, you stand condemned by Him. You're not at peace with God. But God has made a way for you to be at peace with Him. And here's how He's done it. Repent, sir. You need to get right with God. You need to get right with God today. Of course not. It's a fairy tale. Okay. Yeah. God bless you, sir. Take, take See, folks, we all have this written apart. Pardon me? Read some books. Yeah, yeah, I have. One book. Yeah. Books. The Bible. Many. The Bible. That's one book. Word about it. Read more books. Sir, do you believe in evolution? It's not a whether a belief or not. You don't, you don't believe it. You don't believe what men tell you. You don't believe the books you're talking about. You don't know what evolution about. is. Yeah. It's just called change. change. Evolution means change. Yeah. See, folks, we all have this law. Pardon me, sir? Change. Yeah, but we don't have one kind changing into another. Darwinian evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups, folks. It's been developed so that you don't have to consider origins. The true origin of life is God created us. We know that. All of us know that. We've suppressed that truth in unrighteousness so that we can enjoy sin, so that we can enjoy being autonomous from God. That's why we do it, folks. Autonomy is what Satan offered Eve in the Garden of Eden. You'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. You'll be God. See, folks, everyone here wants to be their own God. They want to be autonomous. They don't want to believe that they have to submit to someone else.
but we'll all give an account one day when we stand before him. You see, folks, we all have the law of God written on our hearts. We know it's wrong to lie to people. We know it's wrong to steal from people. Who hasn't done that, though? I've stolen before. I've lied to people. I've, you've lied, too. Thank you for your honesty, sir. Who hasn't told a lie here? All to serve it, folks. God bless you, sir. How are you doing? The life of my son is in great danger of death. Yep. I'm going to give my life to save him, not the other way around. One. Two. Did he came back three days after? Yes. Yeah? yeah. The story is a little weak even to you, my son. The God, they don't die. I don't understand. You anyway. don't understand, eh? Yeah. yeah. See, folks, we violated that law. If you create a God in your own imagination that you're more comfortable with so you can continue to enjoy sin, you're storing up wrath for yourself for the day of wrath. The Bible says we're storing up wrath. And as we get older, like this man here, and like myself, you get older, sin hardens your heart even more. You love your sin so much that you deny the truth that you know. We all do it, folks. God is rich in mercy. We violated those commandments. We did not put God first. Many of us are idolaters. We worship other things above God, which makes us idolaters. Perhaps you created a God in your imagination that's okay with pornography or something like that. You're an idolater. You've created a God in your own imagination. He doesn't, Jesus said, you must be born again. That's just not some, some fancy term for turning your life around. Being born again means regeneration. It means changing your nature. Taking you from being a person who hates the truth, hates the one true God who we're all aware of. You say, well, I've never hated God. Which one? If you've got a God that's okay with a little bit of lying, a little bit of stealing, a little bit of lust, a little bit of pornography, whatever it might be. You don't have God, you're an idolater. You created a God in your imagination that you're more comfortable with. But the God that we all have to face, the one that we all are aware of and know, is the one you have to face. And He's perfectly holy and just and righteous. And His standard for entrance into His presence is absolute, perfect, righteous. Righteousness in God's word and deed. Yes, sir. Yeah. What are you talking about? We're talking about Genesis 1, 6, 7. All yeah. plants of seed are a direct gift of God to man. Oh, what? You, I'm sorry? All plants of seed are a direct gift of God to man. And yet, the hemp seed, which is the healthiest food of human eat, is not legally allowed to be produced on this planet, which is perpetuated by that organization. So, I mean, yeah. you, you say one thing, and yet yeah. you, you support another. The RCMP, you mean? Yes, sir. Okay. The RCMP exactly. are necessary. Oh, well, absolutely, the RCMP yeah. are, are necessary, but they yeah. perpetuate they perpetuate the, the devaluing of yeah, the Yeah, they uphold the law that's been given, right? The, the man's law. Fall, I didn't say smoking pot, okay. I said growing hemp seed. The oh, okay. healthiest thing a human yeah, well, can eat is illegal that. to grow. Yeah. yeah, well, the RCMP does. Well, well right that's, that's the way it is. Because man is not perfect, right? Man is sinful by nature. Even our laws are not perfect in this land. But they, they don't uphold but, the laws of, of, of that book? No, not perfectly. You're right. But the Bible says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. Caesar killed, murdered lots of people. Yet Jesus told people they had to pay their taxes because those taxes Jesus take care of taxes. Did Jesus pay his taxes? Yeah, he gave a coin. That's right, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. He said he paid I, the temple tax. Yeah. He said he, you give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and I'll give unto my Lord what is my Lord's. No, he did not say that. Render unto you know, Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. That is the actual quote. See, folks, we twist the word of God to make it say what we want so that we can remain in rebellion to God. You must be born again. You must be given a new nature. You must repent. You must turn from sin and put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. This is God's people or not to obey Him. And we're here to tell you what God has told us. Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for the crimes that we committed against God. When we say, don't judge folks, when we say that, we're doing the very same thing. The Bible does teach that we are to judge righteous judgment. 
Judge, not lest he be judged. Right, see, that is the most <laughs> twisted and abused Bible verse in the entire Bible next to John 3, 16. I don't, I don't hear you Because it's talking about Bible judging the hypocritical. I telling people what they I am as do. guilty as this man is. Like, I have committed God's, I have committed crimes against God. Don't tell people what I've they sinned do. against God, don't same as this word. man. Mercy, reach down, grant me everlasting life. This is what Jesus did, and nothing else. See, folks, man is proud by nature, so proud and self-righteous. The Bible says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves today while you still have time. Thank God to give you the repentance and faith needed so that he can give you everlasting life. He said, come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's not talking about how hard your job is. He's talking about weary and heavy laden with the weight of sin. If you have no weight of sin bothering you, it's because you're still in your sin completely. Don't resist the Spirit's work, folks. If you have any any inkling as to what I'm saying is true, you owe it to yourself to look into this deeper. To know. You know you violated that law. You know it's written on your heart. Get right with God today while there's still time. Jesus Christ suffered and died taking your punishment. See, ma'am, you're looking at my sign here, aren't you? You think, most of you think this is pretty crazy putting this here when supposedly science, all of science is backing this up, right? Is that what you believe? Yeah, most people think that. You see, folks, if this were true, you couldn't know anything because your, your brain or your thoughts in your head are merely chemical reactions in your head, right? Where do you get truth from that? Yeah. So where do you get truth without God? You cannot answer that if you're into evolution. Turn from your sin. Put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ because He alone is worthy. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. And He's coming back to judge. And folks, each and every one of us is destined to die. If we're, if we're on this earth and the Lord Jesus Christ does not return in the next hundred years, each and every one of us here will suffer death. Hey, Satan! Repent, sir. You need to turn from your sin. Get right with Jesus Christ, sir. He'll even save you. He'll even save you. The people at the cross where Jesus Christ was crucified mocked him. They mocked him. They laughed at him. They spit upon him. And they shook their heads and laughed at him and said, He saves others, but he can't save himself. Many of those people who mocked Jesus Christ were saved. God granted them repentance and faith that they might be saved and have everlasting life. That's the God that came down. That's the God who came to this earth to save people like you and I. For God so loved the world, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But you know why so many of us don't like that message? We don't like the message that is only through faith in Jesus Christ that can save us is because we're proud and self-righteous by nature. We want to believe that there is something we can do, that we can live somehow a righteous enough life that God will look at us and smile upon us and go, yeah, you can come into heaven because you made it. Nonsense, folks. There's nothing could not be farther from the truth. There is no earning everlasting life. I, pardon me? Oh, you can't pay me enough to stop, sir. This is there is no you cannot put a price on a human soul. Folks, your soul is so precious that the Lord Jesus Christ wow, came into this world when he didn't have to to suffer and die. This man gave me, he offered me money to stop preaching. Can you imagine putting a price on a human soul? That's crazy. All the money in the world could never buy your eternal salvation. It's only bought through what Jesus Christ has done. You could never earn it. You could never buy it. You could never, ever purchase your own salvation. It comes as a free gift to all those who humble themselves, repent of their sins, and put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already 
because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light, and neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved, or that means discovered. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. There is a day coming when every person ever created in the image of God is going to be resurrected from the dead. And those who are still living will also be gathered together, and there will be a judgment time. There will be a time that you and I, every person ever born, stands before the throne of God. Don't forget this is coming. Don't forget this is a day that is still ahead of us. Every knee will bow. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire.